Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we go any further, stop what you're doing and like the video. Like the video, comment something right now. Just we need to get these video views up and the comments help. So in today's video, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be taking my uh, electric power steering rack. So that's out of an EP3 rack. I don't wanna say it's gonna be a full rebuild, but it's gonna be a, a freshen up. We're gonna be doing more hard race stuff on there. A lot of hard races going on in this car right now. So I wanna give you guys kind of walk through about how I'm gonna refresh this whole steering rack. I got my guys here with me. They're laughing at me. They're staring at me because I'm holding the camera, you know, the YouTube stuff. And uh, we're just gonna have a good time here. I already yelled at them once when we're live. Not laughing at you, really. Nobody talks. I hate those pants on you. <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> well, let's talk about the parts that we got here. We have the hard race inner and outer tie rod kit for the RSX. So here's your part number for that. You get obviously brand new inner tie rods. You get these outer tie rods. Now these outer tie rods are gonna be inverted on my coilover. I'll show you that later on in the video. Uh, we have the same, the uh, center part right here, just painted that. We're gonna be throwing an SHG rack slider. To be honest, I don't know what the condition of this one is, but if we're, I'm gonna do a whole refresh, I'm gonna throw that in there. We got a whole boot set from Honda. So our part number for that boot set right here One piece? Yep. so what you get with that boot set is you get obviously the boot you get your clamps you get your new o-rings because these bolts actually have o-rings behind them you get your new lock for your one of your bolts out there so that doesn't back out and that's basically all you get now i also got a new lock collar here because when you redo this rack you actually have to split the rack apart we're going to re-grease it with some redline cv2 I'm going to throw a new lock collar in there just because I don't know what's going to happen with that one. And then we have another uh, clip in here for the lock in there. I'm going to walk you guys through the whole thing. So the first thing we're going to do right now is we're actually going to take these two bolts out. We're going to pop these clamps off. All you do is get a flat head underneath it. Pop that up. This will come apart. We could slide the boot over. And then we're going to start loosening up our lock collar, which is this guy right here so we can split this rack apart. We got the clamps off. The way we got the clamps off, you get a flathead screwdriver, you just pop them off, you break them, do whatever you gotta do, you're not saving them at all. You get that, then you wanna get the boots and slide them off where they're at, because they're, they're on little lips here. Slide these off so your boots are pretty much free. You do that to slide this portion down to get access to where your lock collar is. We have ours uh, loosened up already, but in order to get there, you're gonna use pliers here Twist this so your rack slides all the way out. We used a punch to loosen this uh, lock screw off. So now you can see this is off. This turns off uh, normal thread. So you can just punch it to the left. Once you get this down, you have to turn your rack all the way out now. So we're gonna get this all the way out because we have to get to snap ring. So once we get this, give it a little half a turn. Now you can see we have our snap ring right in here. This snap ring needs to come off in order to split this part of the rack off so we can slide our boot off. If you want to replace this ring, you're not sure if you're going to damage it or if you, you think you can save and you want to get another one anyway, we got our part number for that ring, which is right here, well for your lock screw. And then you are going to need a new snap ring. This you can't reuse. So for that is your part number for your snap ring. So what we're going to do is this isn't like a typical snap ring where you can use snap ring pliers. We're probably going to have to get a flathead screwdriver because there's a little opening in there. Pop that off so we can just slide it and then we'll slide the whole rack apart. Alright, so we loosened all that up. Now once you take your steering rack out of the vise, it literally starts coming apart. So you're just going to slide this end out. Slides off the other one. Oh, give your extra hands, bro. Don't get too excited. Oh, it's stuck it's this. Yeah, it's stuck in pop there. This. Pop all this out. Give me the flathead. Come on, we can't be using that type oh, of freaking axe. Sorry, it's a force of habit. There we go. The next thing you know, Sergio's getting canceled. What is it? 
twist it out. I think you gotta, you gotta twist it out. Oh, look at all that grease. Said no one. Okay, then you could slide this guy out. And you said Harvest provides that piece right there you were saying? That Our, black piece? No, no, no. Oh, this is from reason? SHG that we're gonna use. Yeah, but honestly, I thought this was gonna be in worse shape than what it is. What do they make OEM stuff? SHG? Uh, it's a replacement. It's oh, okay. a, a replacement rack slider. But it's a better rack slider than the OEM. Well, one. it's made out of a Duralit. I'll, I'll, once we get that, we'll do this. So let's clean all this up. I'll be honest with you, I thought this was broken. But we're just going to clean all this old grease out of this now. And you can see kind of how the rack looks without your whole uh, cover on it like that. We're going to replace this snap ring. This put a new lock collar, so we're gonna slide this snap ring off this way, take the lock collar, new one on, new snap ring, and then we'll reassemble it with the new boot. <laughs> I was laughing, I was gonna hammer that off. <laughs> we got everything apart. I got to the point now where we just greased everything that we could get. So right here, we ran a whole bunch of grease on this whole shaft right here. We put it all inside the teeth right here. Jay had the idea, it didn't even cross my mind. We just started spinning this back and forth so we could run grease through all of this. This is pretty much ready to go besides putting a little bit of grease here where the motor goes. I'll do that at the very end. This portion is done. Then we just threw grease inside our hole. I'm gonna call this like the chamber. All of this is lubed up. And I talked about it in the beginning, but what we're using is the Redline CV2, which is an extremely high pressure, high, uh, temperature resistant grease so it won't break down under the heat of where this rack is located by the header and also it won't also break down because of all the use of it it's basically meant for this I saw this out of a suggestion from SHG when he does a lot of rack rebuilds this is the grease that he recommends so I'm gonna go with what the professional says how much was it I don't remember how much it was honestly but I, it was like $25 or something like that I think it was I don't know. So we got all of this ready to go. Now we're gonna throw in the SHG rack slider. And I think I said it when we were taking this apart. My uh, OEM slider is fine. There's a little nick in it, but I thought this was broken. Anyway, I'm not gonna worry about that. We're gonna throw the new one in. The new one sits a lot tighter. So we're gonna throw some grease on the sides right here. And then we're gonna slide in our uh, little guys. As you can see, they come in from the back. They lock right in, just like that. Then we're gonna throw grease all on here, everywhere we can, anything that's touching something, we're just gonna grease it up, load this in, and then once this is loaded in, we're gonna grab our new boot, load that onto here, then we can meet the two halves together. Mm -hmm. So you get it to here, slide it on, and then you can put it on top. Slide it that way. Towards you. Yep. Can you go a little more? No, yeah, I'm gonna try. Push it to the limit. Here, there we go. Give it a little push. Come on, push against me. I got a strong core. See? Okay. Now slide that. And it should sit in. Okay. And then push it. Mm -hmm. There you go. So there's actual O-rings on these bolts for the rack, which I've never seen before, but the kit comes with them. Put them on like that. Then you got a lock. The lock goes on. Like that. So that way, when you put the bolt, it doesn't spin. So we got 
the whole rack put together, you saw we tightened up that lock collar. We had our, our uh, they call it a snap ring. It looks like it's just kind of a ring holder. That's all together. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna slide our boots over both lips. We're gonna put the clamps on there. And once we do that, I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get our uh, little bracket here for our tie rods. Put this guy here, tighten this down. Jay was uh, explaining it how he installed the new O-rings behind the bolts. So he's got all that. We're gonna put this on. I would like to paint this. I don't have enough time right now, so we're gonna have to just throw it in the way that it is. And then once we get to the point with the bracket, we're gonna install this rack back on the car. Uh, I don't wanna put it with the tie rods and everything on it because it's gonna be harder to install it. So I'm gonna do the tie rods and everything on the car. The whole rack is basically put back together. We got this hand tight, I'm gonna to torque it when that's back in there so that way we can really torque it down nicely. I didn't wanna open this cover up. I'm not like an expert at rebuilding these, but I'm almost positive you take this cover off to adjust your a rack lash. I don't know what the settings are supposed to be, so I'm not gonna to touch that. We tightened our boots down with, uh, they sell these on Amazon. They're like axle clamp uh, boot, axle clamp boot pliers. I think they're what these call. So you just put them on and you just tighten them down. So you got both of these tightened down. And that's basically all we did. We just replaced a slider. We put a new boot on, new clamps, the new lock ring, the new snap ring, and then we greased the hole inside of it it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a lot worse. And uh, it turned out being a rack's in decent shape. I had a lot of play in my steering wheel. I'm going to attribute that to probably being the bad inner tie rods because on my OEM inner tie rods, these, they just kind of fall down on their own. And this is one of the signs that your inner tie rods are bad. When you have a good set, they should not fall at all. And you can see this one's super tight. So I'm gonna say that most of my play was in my inner tie rods. So we're gonna bolt this onto the car right now. And then we're gonna basically finish up. Well, we are done with the install. Now we're just gonna kind of get some more work done. I wanna talk about the coilovers in this video. I feel like there's no need to make a separate video installing coilovers. Everybody's seen how to do coilovers on an RSX. I've taken the rear ones out of my car in a previous video. I went with Megan Racing but they're track series coilovers. So what these are for the RSX, they're 12K front springs, 16K rear springs. These coilovers are already evolved for the springs that are on here. Meaning when I did the previous setup, I took out my, I think they were 12K in the rear, put 18K, but I didn't revalve the coilover. So essentially, that coilover wasn't set up for that extra spring rate. So with these, they're set up for the spring rates that I need. Uh, I could have gone with a different brand. I went with Megan because these were more of, I wanna say a budget friendly coilover, but also with the performance aspect of it being for a track use. I have my camber adjustment on the top. I have my dampening settings, and I also have separate height adjustment on these than I, I didn't have on my tains. The tains were just height adjustment off of your spring preload. So I wanna give these a shot. I've seen other RSXs run these at the track with good success. And the main thing is I'm trying to get rid of the rear squat when I launch. So with this coilover now being a 16K rear spring, but also valved for a 16K rear spring, we should get a lot more benefit rather than just swapping springs like I did originally. So I'm gonna get these, well, my guys are gonna throw these on there's, yeah. He's going to throw this on while I'm throwing the rack in the front. And I just wanted to explain to you guys why we're going with Megan rather than a different brand. It's mostly because I feel like I'm going to get the same performance. Not as good as like, a, let's say, a Fortune Auto Coilover. But I'm going to get the same benefits from it at a better price. So we got everything put back together. We have all the coilovers on. Carter and I, and Jay was here previously, we were all adjusting the height. We got the heights better. The suspension is a lot stiffer. I got it on the softest setting right now, but it's a lot stiffer, which is what we want. So we had to definitely change. I don't have as much rake in the back as I had before because I don't need it now. Now the, the, the shocks are, or the coils are doing their job. I'm looking at the steering rack. I like the angle of my tie rods. They're not too bad. They're not too aggressive. So that's good. I still have the motor off at the top. That 
I'm painting the top of the motor, so that's why that's out. Everything is put back together, and uh, I did run into an issue. Let me just be up front. Put in this left front wheel, that wheel bearing is shot. I don't know if it's an install error, could be an install error, or what, but that I just grab it and it's like there's no wheel bearing in there. So I'm gonna have to take that out and redo that. But for now, the car is back on the ground. I like, like you know, I like the way it looks. We're gonna see if it starts up. I haven't started it up since you know I took all this apart. So I got all the wiring back together. Let's see what happens. I gotta put the, the negative terminal on. fuel gauge in here yet that's we're gonna finish that up later I got the lights yep neon's work so the fuse box is doing its job if I give it some throttle it's probably gonna die Just shot a flame on the cold Jeep. Is it doing anything no. on the back? Oh. So that's going to be a wrap for today, guys. I think we got a good amount of information in there. Definitely the refresh on the steering rack. We got our coilovers in. Our parts pile is basically done. Um, I did take apart. The whole uh, section right here, the knuckle assembly. I'm gonna order a new wheel bearing right now. Press that in off camera, get all that back together. I need to make an appointment for my alignment. The car needs an alignment and I'm still, at this point, I need to finish up the sunroof plug. That's, I need to do one rear bracket. I'll finish that up, I'll show you guys when that's done. Put some more of the interior back together and let's see where we're at on the list. Yeah, so on our list, we're pretty much all done. The fire extinguisher, maybe I'll do that very last minute. And the catch can setup, I don't have time for this. I really don't. I didn't get the, the valve cover powder coated. So that is the only thing left on my list. But uh, yeah, I think that's, and it, and it started. You guys saw it start. So I said in the beginning of the video, if you didn't like it, like the video. It looks like the car is going to make it to H day. I think by the time you watch this, it's already going to be H day. I think. I'm trying to upload quick, edit these quick, get them out. So we'll see. And hopefully I can bring the camera to the alignment shop. I like, you know, so you guys can see that. But don't hold me to it. Sometimes some shops, they don't like being filmed. I used to do my own alignments. I can't do that anymore. The place I used to go to, to do my own alignments, just can't do it anymore. So I'm going to leave you with that. Big shout out to my boy Carter. Carter's been here from the beginning, helping me do this whole transformation in the short amount of time. Shout out to Jay showing up today. He was a big help while I was doing some of the steering rack stuff. They were knocking out the coilover. So I appreciate you guys a lot. And I appreciate if you liked the video. Did I say that? If I didn't, I'll tell you again. Like the video, leave a comment, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay motivated and keep making those streets louder.